For those who are not familiar with you, let us sort of set you a little bit both in time and society. You are descended of the Vanderbilts, the famous moneyed family of, so, yeah. of the American yeah. East. <laughs> And uh, it was kind of expected, I guess, that you would be, go into business or banking or law or something. Supposed to be a something. lawyer and a, a banker, lawyer. like my father. Yeah. Did. What changed your mind? Well, I guess getting to hear good jazz, uh, living closer to Harlem than you'd think, you know. And we we lived up in 91st Street, in New York, and Harlem began around 116th Street. It was a short walk, and, I, and I used to take that walk. Why would you have been captivated by this music? because it was, uh, well, in a way, kind of not, not racially acceptable to, to those classes well, at that time? Well, I didn't care about that, but I, we had to play a piano, and I had to play a piano roles by Fats Waller and James P. Johnson and Lem Fowler and all sorts of wonderful uh, pia pianists, and, and most of them were, I didn't realize it then, when, uh, but they, they happened to be black. And then when, I, when jazz got to be on records, around 1922 and 1923. I had the Georgians and I had Louis Armstrong and Bessie Smith and King Oliver and everything else. So I guess naturally my tastes uh, gravitated to uh, fairly rough music. Did you I have to pay it. much of a price to kind of devote yourself to this kind of music and not go into law and banking? Oh, sure. I was considered an oddball, obviously, you know, and, and I didn't have many upper-class friends. And uh, I had four older sisters who thought they they just couldn't understand, you know, uh, my tastes, the fact that I was slightly radical politically. All teenagers uh, uh, rebel, though, and they rebel. Yeah, of course. And music is an expression of their rebellion. Absolutely. And maybe no, this was a device. No, no question about it. No question yeah. about it. That's, that's right. And, uh, and you know, I, I got to work on a news... The closest I got to Canada in those days, I got to work on a Democratic newspaper up in Portland, Maine. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and you know, I and but all that time I was listening. I was listening to music, going down to Boston on weekends, and going to a wonderful speakeasy called the Rail the Railway Club. How and, old were you? Oh, I was 18, 17, uh, and uh, and I was always the only white person around, you know. But it was, but I but I had my kicks, you know. Were you in great. any special danger or? I just, never thought yeah, I had, was. But you had to be singled out because if you were the only white person there. Yeah. How, how would they regard you, treat you? Well, they thought I was absolutely nuts. I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I didn't chase after chicks. I mean, I did, I was... Definitely an oddball. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really an oddball. You know? <laughs> In a speakeasy. I just like, I just like music. You, you were know? there for the all. music. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't, that, that was, of course, just appalling. You know, they just couldn't understand it at all. All right. Among, we've already mentioned, among the names that you are credited with discovering, was Billie Holiday. And I hate I, to say the word discover, you know. Well, all right. You, you give I me a better one. I latched onto him, all right. Okay. All right, but it was on, only around the age of 20 or so that you that you first heard Billie Holiday. Yeah, I was, she was, uh, let me see. She was 17, and I was 22. When I 22. Was, uh, yeah. What did you hear that said to you, I have to let the rest of the world know about this? I heard a singer who was an improvising horn player. Uh, horn who, player? Yeah, well, that's how, that's how she sounded. She, she would take a pop tune, sing it at each table, and she'd sing it entirely differently every time, every time she opened her mouth. She couldn't help it. She, uh, she well, was, was she styling herself after a, a, a horn player? Oh, sure. No question about it. And Any she, specific horn player? Well, I think she liked Louis and the old Hot Five records originally. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. I'm need sorry. need to have that me. last. That's quite all right. All right. <laughs> and... and, uh, and uh, Prez, and it was so wonderful when Prez finally got to New York in 1936. Lester Young. I mean, Lester Young. I mean, this was, and I knew, you know, that these two would uh, would find, uh, uh, would make music together that was unprecedented, and it was.